If you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know that it took me about 11 months to go from 500 to a perfect score of 800. And like in my bed last night, I was thinking about why, why it took me such a long time. Like if I can raise my current students SAT score, it doesn't matter where you're starting. If I can raise their score all the way to 700 plus within a matter of months, why did it take me 11 months to go from 500 to perfect score? It's going to take me about five minutes to lay all this out and help you understand what these three big mistakes were. And if you have to go watch that next cat video, I can't stop you. Cat videos are cool. But if you are preparing for the SAT or if you're planning on it, then I would highly recommend if I were in your shoes, I would recommend investing this next five minutes and make sure that the next six months of prepping those doesn't go down the drain like mine did. So here we go. So these three things are listed in the order of importance. So make sure you stick till the end to get the most important piece. So the first mistake for me was that I used incomplete materials. Over the span of 11 months, I went through about three SAT books and here's why. Took the practice exam, got like 520. So I was like, okay, I need to get a book so I can study what's on the exam. So got the book, studied from cover to cover, understood everything in the book, memorized everything in the book. And then I went to take a practice exam thinking that I knew everything on the exam now. Wrong. I was able to solve about 60% of the questions on the exam, but the other 40%, I just couldn't solve them. And it's not that the questions were very hard to the point where I just can't solve them. I've never seen that concept before. And I remember thinking that it was really strange that I studied everything the book told me to do and I took the exam and there were new stuff on the exam. So the logical thing for me to do was maybe this book doesn't have everything like it should. So I grabbed a second book. Studied from cover to cover, understood everything and then memorized everything and then did the same thing, took the practice exam again and then boom, same thing happened. There were less questions that I couldn't solve, but there were still concepts that just I've never seen before and I just couldn't solve them no matter how hard I tried. So three months went by, three months went by and I need to grab myself another book because there were concepts that were not covered in these two books. So got myself a third book and did the same thing, studied from cover to cover, understood everything, memorized everything and then took the exam again and bam. I was able to solve like 95% of the questions but there were still that 5% that was just never covered on any of these three books. And I practically had to like teach myself how to solve that question by going to like Google, Khan Academy, all that crazy stuff. And that was the first mistake. There wasn't a single book that covered everything on the SAT in a single book. If there was a book that could teach me everything I need to know about the SAT, it would have saved me so much more time. And that was one of the big differences between my old self and my current students. They actually have a book that they can look and study and learn everything about the exam in a single book. And the second mistake that I made or the second problem that I had was that there were these wacky practice questions on these prep books. As you guys know, how these prep books work is that they give you the concept and there are practice questions that go along with them. And at the end of each book, there is like a set of practice exams where you can just take the exam, right? And the problem is in the practice questions and the practice exams. And it was that they were either too easy or they're too hard. See, SAT's level is about right here. And sometimes the books will give you practice questions and practice exams that are like down there and they will be way too easy. Setting your expectations way too low. And some books will actually give you practice questions that are just way too hard. These are like the difficulty of the questions that are not even tested on the SAT. But because you don't know that, you spend a lot of time trying to solve these questions and try to understand these questions. And as a result, you waste a lot of time. And if you're just preparing on the easy questions, when you get to the actual SAT, you're like, whoa, what? I've never seen this before. Why is this too hard? I didn't know it was this hard. Again, you're essentially wasting time doing the easy questions when you should be practicing with these questions. And another problem with these questions is that these questions, unless you did a lot of like official college board exams, you recognize that there is a certain style, certain tone of the questions and how they phrase it. And that's exactly what you want to get good at. However, these test prep books, they had these questions that are just worded in a way that would never show up on the SAT. And you get used to these questions with different style and different tone. And when you get to the actual SAT, there are a lot of surprises. You take the practice exam on the official college board website and you're like, whoa, this is completely different from what I've been practicing with. So the problem is questions are either way too easy or way too hard, or they're just in different style and different tone of the question so that you are not well prepared for the actual thing. And third, the biggest problem, the biggest mistake that I had when I was studying for the SAT was uncertainty. Just like everyone else, I was studying for the SAT for the first time and I wasn't even sure if I was going the right direction. I would study for like two weeks and I would check my score and my score is like, it's plateauing. It's not going up or going down. It's just plateauing. 
And I asked myself, am I going the right direction? I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. Maybe that's why my score is not increasing. So I would ask these upperclassmen, hey man, like how did you study for the SAT? How did you get that score? I heard a lot of different things, but the problem was that everybody gave me different things. So at first I would listen to this guy and try for two, three weeks. And if it didn't work, I would go ask the another guy and he would tell me different things. And I would try that method for two, three weeks. And if it doesn't work out, I would change to another guy and this thing would just repeat. And every time I was studying, in back of my head, I was thinking, there was that uncertainty. I wasn't sure. I was actually afraid that I was wasting my time because I was a junior at some point and my score's not going up and my time's running out and I'm scared that I won't be able to hit my score until I apply to colleges. If you guys stick around for this long, I want to give you a one secret. And that is, SAT scores don't go up linearly meaning like it's not gonna go up every single week you're not gonna see 10 15 20 points increase every single week rather your score goes up exponentially meaning it's gonna be plateauing for the first couple weeks couple months and so on and so forth and when everything clicks that's when your score starts to skyrocket if someone had told me that i would have stuck to a single method for a month until i saw an improvement but i didn't know that nobody told me that there was that uncertainty for two weeks i study and if i don't see an improvement i get scared that i won't be able to raise my score so i go to another method and it was a mess and i think that is the single biggest problem when it comes to raising your sat score uncertainty you want to be confident that you are going the right direction so what is going to be a solution to avoid these three mistakes so that you can raise your score as quickly as possible and not waste any time. Well, remember the first two problems? First one was incomplete information and second, second one was wacky practice questions. To tackle this, one of the great books out there for right now is College Panda. They have, they cover almost every single information on the SAT and there are a couple, there are a few like wacky questions, but it's compared to the books that I've used in the past, this book is very, it's, it's a lifesaver. And for the uncertainty portion, the way to get over that is to get yourself a great tutor. I wish there was a way for you to get rid of this uncertainty at a low cost or even for free. But the problem is you need someone that had gone through the process and who is an expert in the field. Only those people can actually give you the certainty that you are going the right direction and prevent you from going the wrong directions. And I wish I can tutor every single one of you guys toward the right direction, but I currently can't do that. First of all, because we're under a quarantine, I can't see you in person. And second, my calendar is full right now. If I were to take more students, then that's going to put the other students tutoring quality at risk because I'm going to have to split my attention into more and more and more students and my service can only get so thin. However, to get around that, I created a SAT math online group tutoring program. If you're interested, there's going to be a link down below where you can get more information about the program, but here is the gist of it. It's an online course where I have recorded every single one of my lectures and put it on a website. And the great thing is you can watch this lectures anytime you want, wherever you want, and how many ever times you want. So you guys remember the first problem, incomplete information. So if it's on the SAT, it's in the program. And if it's not on the SAT, it's not in the program. I have only put in stuff that's on the exam, into the course, and threw everything else out. That means every second that you spend studying for the SAT using the course, you're not wasting a second of your time. Second, remember the wacky questions? These questions are actually designed by me. I actually wrote them myself. And these questions are in the exact same difficulty, same style, same tone of the actual SAT. They're not going to be too easy or too hard, or they're going to be sounding way different than the actual SAT. It's not going to be the same, but it's going to mimic the actual SAT as much as possible. And every single one of these practice questions, there's going to be a video explanation going over every single question step by step so that you can understand how to solve a question. One problem that I know that students are having is that they go to the answer key and they look at the explanation and they're like, I, I still don't understand the question. And to solve that issue, I'm also going to be personally mentoring you. I'm going to be personally coaching you so that you are going the right direction. Every single week, we're going to have a live Q&A where we are going to jump on a live call and then you can ask me any question you want and I can just give you the answer just like that. That way, when you're stuck on something, you're not on your own. You can jump on the live call and then ask me. And you guys remember the whole uncertainty thing? If you're not sure if you're going the right direction, ask me. And if you're going the wrong way, I'll tell you that you're going the wrong way and I'm going to put you on the right direction. That way you're not going to be wasting any of your time like I did back in high school and you're gonna to get to your score a lot faster and sooner than I did. So as I mentioned, I can't take on way too many people because if I did, then the quality of the program is going to go down. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can apply for the course. There's going to be an application. I'm gonna show you how you can fill it out. 
The application is not open yet, but it's gonna open as soon as the next video drops on how to fill out the application. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on if you are interested in the program. And if you have made this far in this video, comment down below interested so I know which of you guys were actually watching the video till the very end. So that's going to be for this video, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Good luck prepping, and I'll see you guys in the next one.